professors are sitting and the student is standing. This means I'm a person who is learning from you. Okay? Just it's my turn today to make some oral remarks. So let's get started. Actually, it's not just uh, an introduction to what financial mathematics is. I try to embed a little bit about um, what finance belongs to, what wider studies are, in a subject where you see it relates to our lives. And later we will come in the next days to a lot of financial mathematics, a lot of advanced calculus, actually. And I want to learn more from you, because some of you are also working in related subjects, and maybe we do a scientific collaboration in future. When some of you, you are maybe some of you 25 or so, will be the famous professors. Maybe in the meantime, we have written some papers. Okay? So let's get started. Now you're smiling? It's good. Uh, actually, uh, this subject here is first of all related to education. If you think about what are universities providing, universities are providing kind of education. And science and research are uh, kind of based on uh, how it relates to teaching to education and the, the questions that we have. Uh, I'm a uh, German, as you know, and I'm living in Turkey, Stukine Otriolus, a friend here from Turkey. Uh, and uh, in Turkey and in uh, all of our countries, education matters. It's very important. Uh, so we will introduce a little bit, and because uh, that stream is called operational, operational research, because operational research and its community give a hand to that kind of stream since it's very beginning. And uh, so it's very good now to have uh, so many students and also profs, such as you here, to learn from each other because it's an enormously wide field. Uh, I'm a mathematician, but people work in areas like system dynamics, as you will see, which is uh, much more, uh, uh, let me say, using uh, more rudimentary, less complicated mathematical tools. I will mention about that. And then we come a little bit, uh, I mentioned about HIV subjects, we come to uh, computational biology. Uh, the question is, what are we interested in that? I try to make it very, very easily understandable. And then we bring uncertainty into play. Because in the real world, we have uncertainty. There is very little certain in this world, especially in science. And we can hardly uh, ignore that our data that we base everything on is affected with noise, and there are many other uh, uncertainties. The question is how to do about that. Uh, and then uh, I will mention about how to do it, and then we come to stochastic modeling. Stochastic modeling is a special kind of time-dependent models which incorporate uncertainty heavily. That is a very advanced subject. We discussed with you that there is a huge potential of future research, but we have to understand it in a very easy manner, because in science, Maybe I'm the oldest here in the room, I can tell it. In science, everything breaks down finally to very easy things, which we all agree upon. Science is not very complicated. The things basically, where everything is like uh, these Lego stones composed of, are not that complicated. So let's get started here. Something I will suppress and tell about in the next days. You see, uh, some iconic things here. This is here, KPI, Celebration, or in Valencia, or in Izmir in all our wonderful cities. Yeah, so, uh, and th those curves here, this looks, looks a bit rudimentary, not very complicated. This so la la, there's a kind of six second question is how does it appeal, where does it come from? And then we have switchings. Actually, uh, we listened to a professor here uh, uh, in his opening uh, or invited lecture and from electrical engineering. In electrical engineering, we have switchings. In reality, we can hardly refer to a kind of differential equation or difference equation, but it's always changeable. When you are getting over a threshold, the whole representation of your system, of your dynamics, switches. So there's a switching. This will be called a hybrid system, and the jumps which can occur, because in life we have jumps. When you think about biology, we have a rotation. It means once upon a sudden, the whole biological information is changing. It's it's, it's not anymore as it was before. So this will be represented here, and you see here it's a big jump. Uh, this is called the Levy process, and Professor uh, Simonov is giving uh, talks about that too. So, here we are. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm from that country. When I once in the beautiful city of uh, Antalya, you know Antalya? Antal that is the Valencia uh, of Turkey. It's a sea spa. And in Ukraine, it's very famous because Ukrainian friends like to have their vacation in Antalya. 
But I was normally go there for conferences. And when I mentioned the German said, you should not do this, because here it looks as if Germany is better than other countries. If you go to Germany, that's uh, my country originally, you have many differences. There's the east, the west, there's a city center, there is the, uh, the regional areas. But the point is, in all our countries, we need to improve. There is, what regards to education, a huge deficiency. The question is, how to do about that, and how to find out what is needed. To find out that we need to make this map better in all the countries needs to explore information that are given by the data. The question is, how is this possible? And this lecture is about this. Now, it's about primary education. Maybe in Germany we have a different system, but in the Anglo Saxon system we have primary education, secondary education, there is age of about 11 when one goes into the other. Who are the players? I mentioned to you, maybe it's a little bit puzzled, that I also did a lot of research in computational biology and bioinformatics. It does not seem related to finance, but it is. You know, I always tell my students, my young profs, that you are, like everyone, is a genius. Everybody has a huge potential. So every player is a gene, a genius. It's a particular participant. And whether you look at bio biological information, they, these are the genes, for example, or you have a game theoretical representation, and there are different actors who are kind of competing or collaborating. And when it comes to modeling... Thank you. You're welcome. Always welcome. Yeah. Hello, dear friends. Um, it's uh, kind of a bit of similar. It did not miss so much. It was a very easy speech so far. Wasn't it? Not too complicated. You it? Okay. Uh, in a nutshell. So, in education, primary education, secondary education, players are, of course, the parents. Parents are key players, yeah? Not a school or a university can provide what the parents could do. And major goals are providing this, uh, doing some mathematics to read and write, but also to take care about the bodies, uh, to, be, uh, to, to work as well uh, with our... Uh, the, the, what God gave us uh, to take care about us, to be clean and so on and so forth. So this is all subject of uh, education. There is a political debate. Expected benefits are very obvious. Why we need education. Uh, and uh, uh, work has been done in order to figure out the factors that are influential. Which factors have an influence? So if we observe a deficiency in our lives, that I say, oh, recently I'm so unhappy, the question is why? Which factors are behind in order to make you feel unhappy? What could be done regarding those factors? It uh, has to be figured out and then certain strategies have to be uh, found out in order to lead to an improvement. You, you see, that is a kind of politics. Which strategies, which kind of policies to apply once having understood which factors lead to uh, problems, uh, to uh, overcome them. Uh, and work has been done, as you see, it's easy to understand, so please allow me not to read here word by word. Uh, and uh, to design a good policy, a good overcoming of what was found to be lacking, one has to understand in education reasons behind Enrollment. Enrollment means when it goes to school or one doesn't do it. Why do people drop out? Why do young people don't go to school anymore? They are not anymore, anymore registered. Perceived quality of teaching, educational level, and the income of the parents, and many other factors which are, when, if I would have asked you, you would have told these factors to me right away. It's easy to understand. The question is, how does it go together? Which factors exist and how to overcome them? What could be done by the help of operational research? I spoke with some of you here, some of my profs are from Valencia. I'm interested in football. And in football we say in Turkey, much catch catch. Much catch catch is what is the standing? Two to one, five to six or so. Uh, and in, uh, that is basically the idea in mathematics why we are using matrices, a matrix, a table work, something goes in, maybe the, 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 the guest team and the home team. So the standings are written in kind of a matrix, input-output. 
So, to match, you can say to correlate, to see how the interrelation goes. And this is called in system dynamics the cross impact matrix. How does one impact on another one? And one wants to predict the effects, then one has a discussion, and then one develops policies and intervention policies but that is behind. First of all, we have data. So we have to explore kind of a model where those interactions, those impacts, between the different, let me say, players uh, are listed. The point is, the players are not just human beings. They are represented by a vector. A vector which is displaying their different properties. Age, gender, lifestyle, income, and so on. That is what is... And then the question is, how do those different players at which level uh, interact? If we have different variables, how to compare? Somebody says a million, somebody says 5.0, somebody says minus 0 0.0005. How can we compare? What one does normally is one tries to scale them, to make things a bit of comparable. We do it always. We will mention also for us, of guess, when we will come to the Levy processes, in German we say A4. A4. That is a formatted kind of a size. What we do in mathematics, in the operational research, is we bring numbers to be located be between 0 and 1, or in probability theory, between minus 1 and 1, always to make things a bit of comparable, otherwise it's not going. And then the question is, if we have a variable and that variable after a small time uh, in increment delta t, a little bit later, the question is, how can it be represented? And the point is, Again, in football, much catch, catch, who is stronger? Who is running faster? Is it, for example, the negative or the positive impacts? The red or the green? You know the meaning of red and green. So, and this is represented by means of such a pi, which occurs here as an uh, exponent. You see, it's a very easy kind of way, based on data, to see how a dynamics propagates. And uh, the variables responses uh, they decrease to zero. Question is, how does such a curve look like? You can say maybe hmm, it's like a parabola, x to the p. It's like a parabola, but the p can also be a half. Then it's a parabola, then it's a square root, x to a half. So basically, those curves are composed by parabolas and by root functions. And those are what is standing behind, in very easy kind of operations research, what is called sigmoidal functions. Because what we always have in life is light switched on and off. Zero, one. We as people who are fond of mathematics, we prefer to have continuous functions. And zero, one, to be represented, you can see it goes up, maybe a bit kind of a polynomial, and then it becomes a root function. So this kind of idea is behind. And if you see that 0, 1, in and out, belonging to a class, belonging not to a class, this is data mining, this is called classification. And the use of calculus is all about this approximating functions between 0 and 1, and we'll come to those kind of things later on. Okay, that is what I want to mention, and I think it's not very complicated. It's not, yeah? Oksana, not very. So for that reason, I go a bit ahead. Is it okay? Okay. So, uh, you see, what we have, I mentioned about the classification. Classification is dealing with um, discrete uh, 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 numbers, labels. You know what a label is? My label is Ukraine. Yeah? I have a flag in the hand, and this is here saying, this person, he has a label, he has a value. And if you have finitely many values, and you make a study, this is called classification, otherwise regression. Uh, and uh, so, some of the uh, attribute levels are desirable, others are not. You know, Professor Gülzer, our friend, she said she deals with multi-criteria decision-making. Multi-criteria decision-making is about uh, different goals. Much catch, catch. Yeah. Which goal is uh, dominant uh, towards the other? Uh, and if it comes to different goals, some goals are more desirable, other goals are less desirable, so it, uh, some, uh, sometimes we are about desirability. Then 
some of you, I think it was our friend from Sydney, uh, he is studying from Sydney, University of Sydney, he is studying networks. If it comes to, to networks, networks are basically the language in mathematics, uh, in applied mathematics, because it represents the interaction between the different compartments, the entities, and what is characterizing them by numbers. So this is a network. And what we do is we put some uh, roller blades or so, some kind of uh, 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 something which uh, take our shoes, yeah? we make them slide, and we put our networks on the way. We, we send them in time ahead. So this is a dynamical system, but the subject itself, there are different things that interest us, some entities and the numbers, and the interaction. And a lot of talks which will be given here will deal with those kind of networks in history. So we put a stamp on the network and say, go. And we follow the dynamics in time. But of course we have to benefit from the information that we have. And that is called data. At the beginning of everything there are the data. Here you see alpha ij, these are in our networks, in our table works. Much catch catch. Yeah? Much catch catch. In Turkey, very important question because we love the football. Like in Ukraine. No. The alpha IJs, these are explored by the help of the data. The data will be determining that these kind of numbers are, and uh, you see, very easy ways are these, like uh, you can read it better 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, and so on. You, you see, this is categorical. If you want to make it easy, we cannot say oh, 0 0.4999567. It has to be a bit uh, crisp. You know, Chris, sometimes I gave a talk in Australia also. I would say, hmm, it could have been a little bit more crisp. And to make it crisp means to break it down to some granularity, a representation to a few cases. Not that everything is being mentioned, something very, uh, to, to be grasped and to be addressed finitely, many. And so we can say, oh, four stars, you see, like conference, a four stars hotel, four star hotel, a like guest house. And it goes down to minus, to four uh, minuses and so on. Uh, so this is basically behind in order to see how the interaction goes. And then we see, for example, level of enrollment, level of boys drop out, level of girls drop out, based on the data, how it is. If the ladies are dropped, the girls are dropped out, the boys are also dropped out. And so on. There are, by empirical evidence, uh, pluses and minuses assigned in order to express how much they interact and in which direction. Because it can be positively, it builds up in the same direction, or negatively. That means one is eating up the other one. One is getting strong, the other one is getting less. Okay? So this is all behind. And to give you a flavor in the situation of Turkey, uh, uh, it's about uh, primary education. Uh, you see there are the family, the teacher, the student, and the uh, school environment. The environment you see that is surrounding, but can also be regarded as an own actor, an own entity, an own player in the game. Uh, and uh, then one is interested in the relationship properties, liars and feedback, fellow and uh, follow and guide, and so on and so forth. So I think that is what you, in a silent moment, uh, could write down yourselves. Just to tell you, student, teacher, family, and the environment, these are the entities. The players. Uh, and in finance, we will learn that, for example, these can be price processes. I mean, per financial assets. It's an entity and it has a value. For example, the logarithm of a price. And then we want to see how these financial assets interact because they are very much dependent on each other. Yeah, it's a market where they are traded. And how to learn, how to assess. Those kind of interrelation properties, we did a lot of works in these areas in the last years. And you see, the, the entities and the attributes are not believing in education, dislike of school books, lack of good Turkish language skills. So these are the different expressions, and we see big, small, we give values, and then we see how it can be modeled. And some of them are, uh, uh, can be compared, they are belonging together, kind of, other ones are antagonistic they are standing against each other. Dear friends, things I believe, it's not very complicated, which I say, 
you can download later on everything and read it, and there are publications about these things also. Just to give you a glimpse about what I mean, and then I will continue. And you see, these are data which we used, and I give you an idea about uh, work which we did in, uh, in India. It's uh, the state, it's not very well developing, it's one of the most developed areas in Turkey, in, uh, in India, to the north of Mumbai, it's called Kujar. Uh, and you see difference, uh, red means it's the negative situation as, as it is. And it is here about uh, the level of enrollment. Level of enrollment. If you have a school and the school is lacking light, uh, it's dirty, and so on and so on. Children get in, the pupils enter, and they are normally, people are very enthusiastic, isn't it? Even the, the children. Children trust the adults, the teachers, of course, the, the parents, first of all. And so they are very cheerful, and they get in, and they hey, and they get in more into, and then there is a stagnation, and then it uh, degrades. So these are empirically uh, how curves are. Firstly, one is cheerful, one, has a, one gives a credit, and then later on the things become very poor, and it degrades, and the level of enrollment becomes little, so the students don't go anymore. They, they stop. Uh, now, if one uh, plays a little bit, with, uh, having understood the relationship properties, one can undertake something to make the school clean, to make the window open, and uh, to give the children the food and so, the milk, for example, these are the policies in order to, uh, to lead to a higher uh, level and keep it uh, as is. So these are so-called simulations. Simulations, that is actually what has been done in operations research often. i give you another example. This is about level of repeaters. In German, we say sitzen bleiben. Uh, bleiben is to stay, to stay sitting. I mean, to, not to stand up and to go to the next class, but to, to stay at the class and to repeat it. Level of repeater. So, uh, if the school is not inviting at all, the level of repeaters increases. It's a very poor situation. This here is under improved conditions after having played a little bit with the parameters. And you see, it still goes up. Do you see here? It is increasing. That means uh, there is a delay. Uh, in, uh, sometimes we have it in our dynamics of all kinds that things don't uh, uh, grasp and don't get a grip on the problem right away. But there is a time shift in order then to improve. That means even if you improve, still more people uh, repeat, more students repeat, but slightly more, and then it gets down and it keeps at a, a low level. So you see, one can understand, but this is all called uh, simulation, so-called system dynamics, and we did a similar stuff with HIV. I don't want to go into the detail, it's also published stuff, means sometimes uh, HIV, the uh, people who have HIV plus, uh, are not uh, telling it, because it's a shame, nobody wants to tell, I have an illness or so, uh, but it's important for that it's not propagating that one learns about who is ill and uh, treats it very, very decently and so, and to make uh, some kind of study about those subjects, how it relates and what the difficulty is and how to overcome it, we made a scientific research in that area too. And please allow me to talk it, uh, and you can read it in publications. So, dear friends, I told you at the very beginning, as you all know, because you are my profs, life is characterized, the real life, that is the life that we are in, by uncertainty. All data we have uh, are doubtful, because the measurement areas, the window was open, the experiment was influenced by, by, uh, by a water drop, or there are, you'll find pl plenty of ideas and reasons for saying life is characterized by uncertainty. And such kind of noise in the data is heavily influencing your modeling. The modeling is kind of the resources which are getting into the, into the statistics, the data mining. And the model will be established on the data. If the data are ill, let me say, the whole modeling will be ill. That is the difficulty. And let me tell you a little bit what we did in uh, computational biology. I make it easy. Again, we make it easy, you know, it's about yeast. You know yeast? 
we have here very nice bread in the Ukraine, and yeast is in many countries used for making bread. Huh? It's a very easy kind of uh, biological substance. And we have data. We have several times when genetic information is taken, and then in the yeast we have different genes, and for those measurement times we can see those genetic expressions. We call it expression levels. Actually, I learned to write in publications that I say this is an expression level. In finance, the financial market or one asset and its goodness or badness and its condition expresses itself. We are expressive. We give numbers. We are not saying this is an actor. Uh, this is a, uh, yeah, a football player. This is here. Uh, football player, he does very well. Yeah? And, but we, we, we assign labels to it, isn't it? So, and this is what we call expression levels, and we have it in biology also, it has a particular meaning. Uh, one point is, if you see here these expression levels, they are according to, to genes. Genes are like uh, building stones uh, in the biological information. And if you follow for, with the different colors, the different genes, you, you see that there are different trends. But, I mean, this is a very easy kind of curve. We call it, as you know, linear interpolation. You have points, you say a point, another point, and then the Oksana brings me a ruler, I put the ruler here and I draw a line. That is a very easy curve. Life is not an easy curve. It's a point uh, uh, hit in the wall and uh, with a ruler to make a line. This is not life. So the question is, but what is life? How to model about it? And what we did was, we were using uh, systems of ordinary differential equation. Systems of ordinary differential equation. And in these equations, we have the different genes. The different genes exist. And these different genes, they are uh, re related uh, to each other. And the question is, how could we uh, find our matrix? A matrix which is representing the relationship properties. Because in biology, like in the financial market, we think that in finance, the prices of assets, they are depending on each other in a certain way that we will need to find out. And likewise, in biology, the genes interact. They are dependent on each other. The question is how? By which matrix, by which kind of a relationship property matrix, like in football, the different teams, what is their standing? And who is the winner? And how is it going? Are represented. What one does it? One discretizes it. So whenever one has a system of differential equations, I think everybody knows the differential equation. Am I right? You know from undergraduate studies, isn't it? Should I tell it again or necessary? No? Differential equation? No, the differential equation is a kind of a relationship property between a state of a variable and its dynamics. The dynamics is given by the derivatives in time, sometimes also in space, and uh, the other ones, uh, that is just the state, as it is. The question is, how does it relate? If you are at a certain position, uh, with a variable at some time, the question is, what is his tendency? What is the tangent uh, directed uh, towards? And uh, this kind of representation in time of a state that you're interested in, it can be a price process in finance, it can be an expressively many time points. So this is what we call a discretization. Have you heard about to make it discrete? Discrete basically means if you go to take the money from the bank, then people say discrete, discrete, please be discrete. Don't look the other one into his uh, pocket. Huh? Is it clear? So and when it happens in time, discreteness means one time point, another time point, so that is this, and then the computer can work with it, otherwise it's very difficult. Okay, so there are different ways to discretize it, uh, and then the question is, for example in this case, at certain sampling times, a sampling time means when do we measure? When do we measure? Uh, is it a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday, a Friday? These are the measurement points, T0, T1, and so on. And then we get numbers. The, these are all called data, like these ones. And then what we try to do is, uh, I can tell you how I try to 
understand and tell it also. What data mining does? Data mining, you can also call it statistics, it's quite okay. Tries to, if you go to a gym, you see the strong men there. The strong men, they want to compress a vector. You understand? They want to bring that vector to a very, very uh, uh, short lengths. Not people like me, I cannot do it. I just pretend. So, and this kind of vector that one, we as a strong ladies and strong gentlemen, try to make very small, and this is by the way called Euclidean norm. The Euclidean norm of a vector, the lengths, is trying to get very small. We say least squares, it's basically kind of the lengths. It's the difference between both kind of a data and the model. The data which is given and the model by, mit, by means of which we try to represent the data, let me put it like this. This kind of difference vector, we try to, to make as small as possible. If we do it in our case, we try to get an optimal M. So which M is, you know, the famous song of optimization? I'm a bit older than most of you. When I was a young man, there was a lady from America, Tina Turner, her song, her song was simply the best. You understand? So which uh, matrix M is uh, simply the best? You see, I use, we use here the modern uh, uh, Hollywood uh, technique, but we also we sing the song sometimes. Oh, so simply the best. So, and uh, so that matrix M is considered to be the best matrix in order to represent the given data. Uh, and please look here, there is 0.4. 0.4, that means the first gene, first color, is influencing the second gene by a change rate of 0.4. So the incremental rate, the change rate, is just 0.4. First gene, second gene, and the factor of change is 0.4. And you see, one gene is influencing the other gene by a factor of 0.4. Now, if the first gene has a very high level, X1 is a high level, the high level is multiplied by 0.4, and this product, 0.4 multiplied with X1, is added to the, ex to the expression level of the second gene. So this is the, the delta, the delta, the incremental change in the second gene, which was caused by the first gene. Is it a bit of clear? That is how one tries to get very easily in. <coughs> when I have a problem in life, I said, so what happens now? I'm very confused. And then I try to, 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 to catch some kind of a grip in order to get an orientation and to get hold. Uh, and then I try to, yeah, uh, to, to get orientation and to get hosted. And uh, similar to uh, science, when we are in a very fragile environment, not crisp at all, we have given some data. So what is the straightaway approach in order to build a model? get an explanation. And that is one which I just explained to you. Do it by bringing data and the model very nearby to each other uh, and uh, uh, getting such kind of a genetic network. In reality, the genetic networks are much larger because there are so many genes and life is much more rich uh, than I said. Uh, and you see there are many genes here. All of these are genes. Some of them are very important. You know what it means, important? Some of you are very sportive, maybe. Boxing. Klitschko. <laughs> Kiev. Yeah, national sports with football. Uh, and uh, I'm not a boxer. <laughs> it's not, I'm not such a person. I, maybe I'm, not, I'm too, afraid, too much afraid. I could knock me out easily. So if you want to uh, knock out, uh, then maybe a gene is kicked out, flipped out, or such a line, such an arc, is taken off. But maybe you already heard by the media or in biology about a pathway, a metabolic reaction chain. So if one gene is influencing another, is influencing another, it's like a chain reaction. And if you flip out one, maybe the whole reaction chain uh, is dropping down. Is a bit of clear? Yeah? And for that reason, some of those no points are more important for the whole network than others. Because they are, you know, in, uh, in the airports, we call it a hub. 
a hub. For example, what do you say? Let me say Heathrow, London Heathrow. It's a hub. If you think London Heathrow and to go to New York or to Frankfurt or to Amsterdam, not important, then the whole traffic will break down very easily. Is it clear? So one has to then say, um, if in reality our networks are much larger, the networks are much bigger, how can we uh, still cope with? In reality, we are not dealing with highest accuracy. You know the song of uh, uh, Tina Turner, simply the best, that is idealism. In the real world, in operational research, applied mathematics, and in engineering, and so we have to compromise, to make a compromise between highest accuracy, simply the best, and also easy, easy going, make it possible to do it at all. If you have a problem and it's wonderfully solved, and the computer is breaking down after several, several hours and gives you a result, and somebody has a little different data, and the result is very different, uh, and, and you see that the, the, the res first result was not meaningful. So we have to make results meaningful, regular, stable against outliers. If in a data, uh, one uh, data point is lying very far away, in Rostov, for example, the other ones are here. This one data point has a very strong influence, and maybe it was just a measurement error. So one has to make such networks easy. One has to make them rare. In English, rare, you mean it means seldom, not so often, rare, rarely. Uh, and for that reason, what we are doing is, so you are the master of the ceremony, you are the masters of the ceremony. Should I continue? <laughs> so the two friends became my profs in last years already. So when they tell me something, I'm listening. Okay. Let's continue. I hope it's not very complicated. I try to make uh, things uh, understandable. So what we have to do is, we have to make a network acceptable to a computational machine. That the result that comes out is a good result, a meaningful result, a regular result. So we have to make, uh, to flip out some of the edges. And to flip out means to say, like here today, we made a security thing, we closed the door. Yeah? So we have sometimes to flip out a possibility and then we have to say, hmm, which gene is not very important? Which is a hub? What is a Schiphol and a Frankfurt and a Heathrow? What are very important hubs? And then we say, hmm, to those we let 10, 20 edges go out or go in. Other ones, which are not very important for the connectivity, like yesterday I was in Dortmund. It's a small airport. So we say maybe just two edges, two connections go out. So we have to put a bound on the in degree. Degree means how many goes in. And out degree, how many edges go out. And we put a bound. We say, OK, stop. To make the network at all not too full. Yeah? When I was a young man, I gave talks. And the people said, oh, the slides were so full. It was not bad, not too full. <laughs> so we have to make it a little. We have to take off. It's OK, dear friends. You know, people said in former years, uh, less is more. Small is beautiful. So it's also true in operational research not to overdo. Too much is also uh, sometimes not very really good. So, and now to the in degree and out degree, you know what it is? In degree and out degree is uh, the beginning of mathematics. You know what the beginning of mathematics is, in my opinion? To count. Zero, zero, there's nobody. <laughs> zero, zero. One, one, formula one. So, to count means to add zeros and ones. That is basically the height. And uh, the in and out degree is to add zeros and ones to count. We count how many ones go out, and we put a bound. We say this edge is a middle, this uh, hub, that kind of a gene is a mediocre, a middle uh, uh, important uh, gene. And we just give it four edges uh, to get out. And so we have to say one, two, three, four. Four times a one. So this is basically behind. 
And what one does here is now the following. Uh, uh, dear friends, uh, in reality, we do not only have genetic information, because there is a kind of environment. In biology, for example, we have radiation. We have all kinds of changes of temperature and so on and so forth. So we have environmental uh, variables in addition to the biological uh, variables. In biology, we interest in gene expressions, a special kind of biological information. But there is additionally also what the, in, the environment necessitates. The degree uh, of temperature, the radiation, uh, uh, you see, there are so, and the pollution, but also positive things like the education level, the, the situation of the financial market. If the financial market is doing well, there are less collapses. The people don't lose the money. They have food. They can buy food. They still have a, a, a money to feed the children and so on. Okay? So that is one is the environment in a wide sense. The other things are the primary, like primal and dual, primal and dual, target and uh, environmental variables. And in that case, what uh, maybe is also for your research useful, what you do is the following. You say, hmm, you say, hmm, I take my primal, my target variables, okay, that vector, and then you take the environment and put it under beliefs of the target variable. The target means that is what you interest in most. You take the environment and consider it as being just further variables, and you make a long vector out of the two. That is a little nice trick. So, you see, in, matter, in science, we are using that kind of very straightaway tricks to just consider the environment as part of the entire variables that we are interested in. And then we get a bigger model, and in that kind of bigger model, we can still, in the bigger model, and I wrote here E and the uh, uh, bar, and it, it's the augmented, the enlarged uh, variable space. And then we can still do our research, uh, and uh, you see, we say this is here the environment. The environment is like a perturbation. Uh, do you all know perturbation? To perturb, disturb. You study something and the environment is like you have a mosquito in the room. Is a bit clear? You say, oh, today I'm so happy. Hmm, wonderful. Football was going well. At school, things are going well. The food is nice, the weather is nice, everybody is friendly. But the mosquito is disturbing me a little. So the, that means we put the environment under beliefs of our variable and make it a bit of larger. Uh, and this is what we basically do. In a certain sense, we put this under the E and we make it large. Some of you know that optimization, which is a key activity in, oper in operational research to optimize, continuous, discrete, all kinds of optimization, optimal control, when you have variables in time, all of them uh, are sometimes called mathematical programming. Have you heard about? I think most of us have heard. There's even a famous journal called Mathematical Programming. It's basically optimization. But it sounds as if you have a program. Like, for example, uh, uh, a pro you, you mentioned about the production, lean management, and all. We have production programs. We have table works where we see which resources are getting in in which way. So again, we have these table blocks, and by these table blocks we can navigate. We can see which different variables impacted on, had an influence on other variables in which way. Uh, and uh, you see, this is our model here. It's now an enlarged model, consisting of the primary and the dual variable. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, we can discretize. This part, I make a bit shorter. Dear friends, you can make your notes, but you can also just download what I wanted uh, to tell you. There are slices uh, produced, I mean PDF files, which uh, Bogdan uh, will uh, publish in internet, uh, and I have uh, very fresh research results of all kinds, which you can download and maybe use for your own master, doctoral, professor works and uh, paper publications. For all kinds of studies, you can use them as you want. Uh, just let me tell you, 
even if you discretize. You discretize means to break it down. A discrete dynamics is broken down. You see, you have a stick, a continuous stick. You say, I break it down, I break it down. That is basically to make it doable, bit by bit. You know what a bit is? Bite it, bite it off. Take a piece. Take a piece of the hole. Don't look at the hole. It's too long and too complicated. Look at it by different pieces. Uh, so there are different ways. For example, Hoynes method and others. I, I want to make it easy to tell you that when discretizing, we can still see the structure of the dynamics and how the different uh, parts are getting together uh, easily. Uh, and uh, uh, I want to show you here uh, this little picture. This is called Euler, Euler's method. Have you heard about Euler? Euler's method? Euler? If I ask you, who is Euler? Some people say he's from Switzerland. Others will say he's from Russia. Former times to Russia. I mean, you can say Ukraine also. Okay, Euler, born in Basel, close to the German uh, border. Uh, and he is a founder of, uh, of a huge part of Russian or uh, East European mathematics also founder of graph theory in a certain sense. Leonard Euler, one of the big five or four in mathematics of all times. And um, this Leonard Euler did the following. Do you know what a derivative is? A derivative? Derivative is the slope of a tangent. If you have a curve and you take you put a slope on it, and the slope has a certain amount, like uh, 0 0.5 or so. This is the derivative in time, as a function of time. But it comes basically by a limit of the difference quotients. Difference quotients is you go here, a delta x and a delta y, and you take the slope between the delta x and the delta y. And then you make the delta x smaller, and the delta y is also normally getting smaller, and then you get a limit of the whole. And this is called the derivative. And now we do the opposite, because we have this slope, and now we break it down again and approximate by delta x, delta y, the continuous derivative. This is called uh, Euler uh, derivative. It's the easiest way uh, in order to uh, differentiate. You see here, dear friends, I make it easy. Uh, let me say y dot is f of x, uh, y dot is like y of x plus delta x minus y of x divided by delta x. Okay? Is it a bit of clear? And then you say, so this is then for the ease, uh, I uh, identified this delta x, and then you say delta x plus delta uh, y of x plus delta x uh, is equal to delta x times f of x. Uh, plus uh, y of x. And if you do it for a different uh, case, x case, then you get an idea what uh, y of uh, x k plus 1 uh, basically is, uh, depending on delta x. Is it a bit of clear? So by the way, uh, uh, yeah. that is how one discretizes uh, a differential equation. This is called Euler discretization. It comes by replacing the y dot by the delta y divided by the delta x. This is behind. Basically what we learned in undergraduate studies. So, but it's a very primitive kind of uh, uh, study. And you see, if you want to apply it on our biological information, it can happen that the gene uh, expression level goes up and down uh, in this way. And maybe biologists will say this is not how a gene information, a genetic information goes. It is not this kind of a dynamics. So if you go to more sophisticated ways, for example, still it goes up, you see, it's going up and down, but it has a tendency to go towards an equilibrium. You know what an equilibrium is? It's a rest point, a stationary position. Because people may say, in biology, for example, that there is a tendency, uh, like entropy, that the things are getting uh, rested. They are coming to a rest. There is a tendency towards a, a stationary, if possible, stable position. And you see here, this is the way how it goes if one is using a more refined 
discretization scheme. And here you have it all together. So, now at the end of this little talk, uh, I want to mention about the following. Uh, if I say to you, uh, what is the uncertainty? What is the uncertainty? <laughs> How to catch it? You know, sometimes you see the Hollywood films and they have here catchers and they are running behind the butterflies. Okay? So, we say uncertainty, I think it's a butterfly. Hmm, let, let, let me catch the butterfly. Let me have a container, a kind of a net or so, in order to catch it. And the question is, what would be a, a, catcher, a catcher in order to put uncertainty in? What would be bodies in order to encapsulate uncertainty? Uh, you know, so you have instead of one number, an interval, and instead of this number, you also have an interval, and if you put them all together, you have such a box. This is also called a confidence interval. This is also called a confidence interval. And what you get is basically that kind of a box. But the point is, if you, there is no correlation. You know, correlation means, it's like stones. You know stones? If you have stones in a, in a, in a river, the stones, they are looking this way. The stones look at this way because there is a different uh, directions and it's kind of polishing each other. You have wonderful shapes. You do not have such a form. Correlation, different drives, different energies uh, leads you to those. And you know what it is? It's basically you have a ball, and in this ball, this coordinate and this coordinate, because these are random variables getting into this axis. Random variables is like experiments, and outcomes are in this direction and in that But they are depending on each other. And uh, for example, if this one, this direction, is uh, uh, inscribing the whole uh, numbers of that direction, that means the ball is getting like a needle. It's getting needle kind, because everything is inscribed in this. If that one incorporates the whole information about that, kind of axis and variable, then it's getting this one. And you see this kind of axis attracting others, it can also be positioned this way. Then we are getting this kind of ellipsoids, the ellipsoids which are also sometimes called confidence ellipsoids. They say to maybe 95% the random variable x1 and x2, the results are located in this kind of a body. So that is ways, and there are other people are using fuzzy arithmetics. Fuzzy arithmetics means we do not have uh, density functions, density functions like Gaussian curve, the Gaussian curve. But these are kind of very easy heads. It is an engineering approach to probability theory with the idea of density functions like Gaussian density uh, uh, function represented by easier. Uh, by more easily looking curves. You see, hybrid system we discussed with a, or my friend from Austria. In a hybrid systems case, it's like you have a representation, a global representation, but the global representation consists of local pieces. Here you have a dynamics, here you have a dynamics, here you have a dynamics, and then all together, and when you come from one piece to another piece, you get into a different dynamics. Okay, and uh, here we are. This is called a hybrid system, a Lewy process, which we will study here with our friend. It studies different dynamics with small and big uh, uh, jumps. Uh, and uh, in the financial dynamics, which we will study, I think it's time to make a break. What do you think? It's actually not time to make a break. Sorry? Uh, I think that's better to make a break after. Oh, then let, let us do it this way. Because I'm here subordinate to my boss for the last years, and I want to behave up decently. Okay, so, you see, yeah, in, in a differential equation, you have basically this situation. An x is like a y dot, it's here x dot. Here, this is a, a term multiplied with dt. Basically, you can say dx divided by dt it's A. dx divided by dt is A. So this is uh, basically what we know from undergraduate studies. It's a normal uh, differential equation. What we now take into account is something more. We 
because in our real world phenomena we have random fluctuation. Random fluctuation. And I told you, we as mathematicians, mathematicians, we try to bring it to a point. We say, hmm, random fluctuation that is not crisp, that is, a, it can get out of the window, it can be very small. So what? How can I get hold of? How can I have axioms, conditions? To have a normalized, a formatted uh, A4, A4, you know, a kind of a random fluctuation. And that is what is behind what we call a Brownian motion. A Brownian motion, as some of you know, the idea comes from a pollen, a pollen which is, was fallen, which fall down in a small river, and the river has a lot of stones, and then the water is very turbulent. And this kind of a pollen is making you dance, and the dance is a very chaotic dance. It's a random fluctuation. It can go instantaneously to almost all directions. This is what we have in the financial market. The price processes and the logarithmic values of the price processes are like this. And the W is called a Brownian motion. And the small increment of the Brownian motion is a DW, and it's multiplied with B. And the B is sometimes also called a volatility. I don't want to mention so much. So this is what we studied. We can again discretize this. It's called the Milstein scheme. It's a discretization. And I want to finish this first part of my little talks and then we do it more textbook kind. So today I give firstly a little introduction about the different compartments, how they come together. Uh, I told you, in the life, uh, not only jumps happen. The jumps happen worldwide, it can happen everywhere. But it can be that in a certain kind of uh, the world, like in Europe, there is a representation with uh, random fluctuation, sometimes it can even jump. I don't mention about that too much now. But if you go on the other side of Ural Mountains, the weather is different, it's more continental climate. That means the whole representation of your dynamics is different. The dynamics is a different dynamics. And uh, so I'm living now in Turkey, it's the Middle East. If you come from Europe, maybe some people say it's also Europe. Uh, but let me say it's the Middle East. My university is called Middle East Technical University. So if you come to the Middle East, the language is different, it's more hot, the weather is a bit of different. That means the entire dynamics is different one. So that is what we are calling a hybrid system. Hybrid system means we have dynamics, but the dynamics is broken up by more regional or case-wise study. If you get, for example, in the case of, uh, of biology, uh, with your biological information over a certain threshold, maybe a mutation can occur. That means mutation, the, the biological information switches completely, the dynamics gets to a very different representation. So, and this is what we call uh, uh, the, the, the dynamic system uh, in the hybrid system and it's being represented as follows that we not only have X X is what we interest in most genetic information price processes wealth processes wealth means the capital what is my capital? my capital flow in time how does my, mm, my possessions mm, develop in time it's called a wealth uh, uh, process but the, what we in addition have, we have one more dynamics. And this dynamics is like, as we said, switched on and off. One, switch off, zero. Maybe there are different levels. You know, nowadays, in modern times, we have, we can uh, deem the light, beam. You know, it's a constant regulation. But maybe in the meantime, we say, zero is off. 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. 1.0. So there are different levels of on and off, and likewise we have it here. There is an additional process, M, we call it the Markov chain, and it can have M states. For example, state number one. State number one holds. Then it finishes, because it's random. It can move to a different state. It goes up to state number two. Then it gets back to state number one. Then it goes up to state number n. So, and always you have this state inside of your dynamics. 
So these changes in M affect your entire differential equation. It's like it's a very different one. One for Europe, one for transural mountains, one for Middle East. Is a bit clear? So this is what we call the hybrid system. And uh, it's time to finish now, and we will repeat these things from different perspectives and in a certain sense trail it. You know, I had to go from in Germany as a professor from different places, one to another, I went to, to uh, Turkey, and there were other expectations, so I learned all the different areas, I'm much older than you, uh, and uh, the question is, how can I learn? Doing research by learning at the same time, but trying to crisply understand what is really meant, what is meant, and to train it and to make us inspired about and to see what could be given back, what is the response, what is the potential to make it even better. Because as a scientist like us, we try not only to understand it as a student, we try also to contribute by fresh ideas to it. That is what we also try here together with my friends, you the professors. So, uh, I finish now with the following. We see examples here. <coughs> this is biology, the strong man in the gym. Completely not. The model and the data. How can we make the difference very small? And this holds true while the dynamics proceeds, subject to a certain kind of a dynamics. Uh, and uh, this is called portfolio optimization. We cover this. We want to make the utility of our capital use biggest, or the cost of our, we say, portfolio decision. Uh, to make the decision about how we spend our money into portfolios, to make that uh, 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 having least costs, the costs of our decision to be very small. Uh, and another one is uh, this one. Uh, you know, is it meaningful to maximize minimum? Minimum, we sometimes call it inf. If you don't know whether it exists, we say inf to a minimum. So, do you know what happened? Max of a mean. Is it meaningful or is it nonsense? Because the people say there was a German guy, he said max and mean at the same time. Wasn't he a bit mixed in his mind? No, it can be meaningful. You know why? If you want to prevent from a disaster, like Wall Street crash, or that a price of a, let me say, uh, of an option, it's a financial asset, it's called option, that a price is kicked out. It's getting zero. To prevent from these things, you have to make the time that it happens infinity. Is it clear? When, if you don't like something to happen, like your football team to lose, and the people ask me, when do you want your football team to lose? I want it to lose in infinity. Yeah? In the day, in the calendar, right infinity. Never should happen. Yeah? So, that means we maximize the first time, the infimum is the first time, that it, uh, you are outside, you are outside of what you want, outside of a barrier, of a desirable position, to happen as late as possible, the first time never to come. Is it is a bit of clear? So this is, these are ideas which are standing behind. And now I really finish, and you can take all of this, that stuff uh, by download, if you are interested in, because likewise, some of us learned in, uh, undergraduate studies that this here is a necessary optimality condition. Necessary optimality condition. And now, in reality, we also have constraints. Equality constraint be like be on a surface or a be bigger than a certain value or smaller than a certain value. This is called uh, this is called a Lagrange function. It's f minus lambda times h minus mu times g, and h is equality constraint, and g is an inequality constraint, and uh, lambda and mu are the so-called Lagrange multipliers. So, and then you say l prime is equal to zero, or if if l has several variables, then we say the uh, uh, the gradient of uh, L is vanishing. Uh, have you heard about these things? I think most of you know that we have so-called necessary optimality condition. That means when the point, let me say X is a star, 
simply the best, you know, simply the best. It's a star. So, a star. If it's the best, then necessarily means cannot be avoided. Necessarily. Uh, the gradient uh, has to vanish at that position. Uh, the question is, is it also possible for us in, uh, in our subject? We say yes, it's possible. Do you know why? Because in our case, we have not just such an easy constraint, uh, uh, equality, equality, we have further constraints. And these further constraints, you know the name of them? It's called the differential equation. Because we say we optimize, we make big or small, subject to, that means with respect to x fulfilling a differential equation. So the differential equation is in the position of a constraint. Is it clear? And what we do is we say, hmm, you constraint, stay where you are, I catch you now. We put it from the constraint place, you know, the puck, the pucking place, where normally the constraint is uh, placed, we take it and put it into the objective function. And uh, still we can have a certain kind of necessary optimality condition, and in the former Soviet Union, where we are here, and we have many friends, and one of the authors I met, it's called the maximum principle of Kondriakin, and uh, he has co-authors uh, like uh, uh, and so they invented this kind of necessary optimality condition for optimal control. Because what I said, when there is a dynamics, and to make big and small, given a dynamics, is called optimal control. And we do it now in the case of stochastic dynamics. Not any dynamics, but it's, there is a random fluctuation and other things. So then we call it hamilton jacobi bellman condition. hamilton Jacobi, Hamilton from America, Jacobi, former times in Germany, uh, and uh, Hamilton from the uh, United Kingdom, uh, Jacobi from Germany, and uh, Richard Bellman from America. Uh, and so this is the optimality condition to solve this kind of op optimization problems, like portfolio optimization and so on, in the presence of a stochastic dynamics. Hamilton, Jacobi, Jacobi, Bellman condition. Uh, and that can be resolved by different techniques, which is basically to solve uh, partial differential equations in the case. Dear friends, that was just a little introduction, and not just me, but all of the friends who are giving talks on related subjects. They are in the classroom here, or will come also. Uh, we will try to shed light, to cast light more into this, and to get into an area where we are nearby to research. Not just Please, don't forget, you are professors for me. You came to the summer school not just to be my best friend, which you are anyway, as you know, <laughs> but in addition also to be close to a professor. That means we want to be nearby to where research takes place, and then we have smart ideas because everybody has a fantasy and a creativity to bring these fresh ideas into play, and that is what we call uh, scientific life. So that was uh, the first part of my little talk. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.